Never gone. Please welcome AJ McLean and Nick Carter from the Backstreet Boys. <laughs> hey, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> ah. Yo. Oh, Yo. boys, Yo. as you have said it yourself, Backstreet's back. All right. Now, five years since you guys have uh, released a studio album. Why has it taken so long? Because we, we're just really lazy, and <laughs> we, you know, we, we, we didn't really, we just didn't want to do it. No, we, um, after the last tour, uh, Black and Blue, we finished uh, in 2001 in Osaka, Japan. Uh, at, I think it was what, Thanksgiving, right? Yeah. Um, there was just a lot of negativity going on during that whole tour cycle. Uh, I went to rehab, 9-11 happened. We lost one of our crew members during 9-11. Um, there was a couple of deaths in some of our families, uh, major management issues, just a lot of bad juju, juju. going on. <laughs> so it had nothing to do with the interview I gave you guys in 2000? Because I've always felt a bit guilty about that. You know, actually, you were the total cause for us uh, taking a break. Hey. It's all your fault. Yeah, we appreciate that, bud. Yes. It took too long. Yes, shame, shame, shame. <laughs> no, and you know what? It was a, a well-needed break. Um, it wasn't a break up as many people kind of just made Thought up. or wanted. Yeah, or wanted it to be a breakup. <laughs> we never broke up. We just took a well-needed break. And uh, in 2003, in November, when I did Oprah, uh, talking about my sobriety and my, uh, my whole problem with drugs and alcohol, the fellas all came from all over the world to support me and surprise me. Nick flew all the way from the UK. He was working on his second studio record. And uh, that night, we all went back to the hotel, and we uh, ordered room service and sat and talked and decided we're all ready to go do this again. And Nick, I believe that uh, you boys actually got together and intervened, uh, and that's why AJ went into rehab. I mean, how tough was that for you guys to, to actually make that decision? Um, it, I mean, it was, it was hard. I remember we were in Boston uh, finishing up our, or actually we were in the middle of our Black and Blue tour, and um, you know, he was going through some rough, rough spells. His, uh, his uh, grandmother was very sick, and um, you know, he was just going through some hard times. And I remember we, we were going to throw the pitch out, at a Boston Red Sox game, and he was supposed to come with us. And uh, so he didn't show up. He slept the whole entire night and uh, didn't get up. And he said, oh, we don't want to do it. And we, at that point, we kind of got a little fed up over it. So after we got done throwing the pitch out to the four of us, we went back to his hotel room, sat him down. And him and Kevin had some heated words. You know, they got into a pretty big argument. And, um, and then that's when he decided, he, you know, hey, it's, time, it's time to take care of this and uh, to get it done with. So then that's when he stepped into rehab. Right after that, we went there for 30 days. We brought down the tour for a little bit, but we still had ob obligations with the rest of the tour. So um, right, when he, um, right when he got out after 30 days, uh, we w he went right back on the road with us. And, uh, it, it's, you're not it's, supposed to do that. You're not that. supposed to. <laughs> so um, we, we finished our obligations. And, and the time that we took off was uh, well needed for him also and for everybody in the group. So now he's 100% and we're very happy. Well, you yourself, Nick, I mean, you embarked on a solo career. You, you had drink driving charges of your own and a much publicized relationship with Paris Hilton. How did it feel to be uh, labeled with this bad boy image? You know, I'm not necessarily a bad boy. Come um, on. I'm getting, I guess I'm in the wrong place at the wrong time, you could say. Uh, I'm just drawn that way, fellas. Yeah, how did, <laughs> how did, how did he get that? That used to be my title. <laughs> bad boy. Yeah, I mean, how did I lose the bad boy title to you? That's so, just because you dated Paris, I, I think I got a couple. Title. I got a couple of tattoos. Well, actually, Nick, one thing I do want to bring up, of course, the big news for today, of course, was the, the Michael Jackson verdict came down, not guilty. It was a friend of yours. Not was talk guilty. that you were going to, to testify on his behalf in his defense. Uh, how do you feel as a friend of his to have heard the news that he's been acquitted? Watching it was, uh, was, I mean, it was nerve-wracking, you know, knowing him. And even our security guard used to work for him for a long period of time. And it's just good to, to see that justice prevailed. You know, I, I believe that um, hopefully our, our judicial system out here is, is good and, and proper and right. And um, uh, I was happy. I was very happy to see. Because uh, knowing him and knowing how he is, my brother knows him as well as I do. Um, he does not come off to be that kind of person. And... Um, you know, I'm, I'm just very happy with uh, what happened. Nick, you're, you're on the list to, to possibly testify for the Michael Jackson trial. If you had have testified, 
Who would have played you in the reenactment trial? <laughs> I have no clue. That would have been hard to pick, huh? <laughs> to find a guy with some weird tattoos and an ugly face, you know? Now, uh, we are all very glad, of course, that you guys are, are back after so many years. How did it feel? Because you've already uh, uh, hit the tour. You've already uh, gone out in front of the fans for the first time in five years. How was that initial uh, steps onto the stage for the first time after so long? It's great. I mean, we, you know, we didn't know what to expect. Um, unfortunately, you know, the whole rumor of out of sight, out of mind, you know, you don't know what to expect, um, especially here in the U.S., because the U.S. is so fickle. They change their mind overnight as to what type of music they like and dislike. And, you know, during our little hiatus period, hip-hop kind of dominated, you know, between 50 Cent, Eminem, and Usher. That was the biggest thing. And, you know, Nick has been saying something in, in all of our interviews that is, is very true. It's, it's, it's time to get back to good quality melodies and not just beats that are good to listen to when you're in a you know, club. Now, you guys have just returned from, from Europe. I mean, what's it like to be in a country where the number one song at the moment is a mobile phone ring? Well, it was funny because when we first went over there, um, we were just over in London in, uh, in Europe um, doing some promotion, and uh, a bunch of our fans showed us what originally it was. It was basically like a ringtone with this, just this little frog on, mimicking like he was on a motorcycle. So he sounded like, blah, 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 blah. Bing, bing. I love that. That's my man. And that crazy dog. like that. Watch that be number one in the U.S. now. You watch. Well, thank you very much for chatting to us, guys. Of course, uh, in the meantime, if you, if you don't want to go out and buy the frog ringtone, and why would you? The Backstreet Boys single, Incomplete, is out from the forthcoming album, Never Gone. Please thank uh, AJ and Nick from the Backstreet Boys. <laughs> The bad boy. Boy, bad boy. Be careful. Stay right there. Then not be five years again. Oh, then not yes. be five Thanks years again. Thanks, guys. Still to come, Katie Holmes and Delta Goodman next.